Hello and welcome to Social Church. We've got such a good testimony lined up for you today. We've got our friend Emma Fowl from Creation Fest. Make sure you listen to this testimony all the way through to the end. It's absolutely brilliant. Over to you, Emma. Hi, my name is Emma Fowl. This is my testimony. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. My parents didn't take me to church when I was a kid. My first experience of church was when I was about nine years old. I joined Brownies at my local church and went along to church parade. And um, it was a pretty unremarkable church, really, a little post-war church on a post-war council estate in Essex. But something about that place um, just really made me feel at home. It was the same building that I went to play group in. It was a bit dusty, a bit smelly and old, but in there I found something that I just loved. And for some reason I asked my mum, would she take me back the next week and then the next and then the next. And I'm not sure she really knew what to make of it, if I'm totally honest, but she took me. My dad wasn't quite so keen. He hated church. He would have described himself as a God hater, if you'd have asked him, actually. Um, But despite that, we kept going. And out of those came some really weird conversations with my parents. I was that strange kid who, when I was eight and a half, started asking them, why don't they believe in God? And why wasn't I christened when I was a baby? And as a result of that, I asked them if I could be christened for my ninth birthday. Um, And they said yes. Um, Because my brother, um, who's three years younger than me, his birthday is a week after mine, so he got christened for his sixth birthday as well. I'm sure he probably would have liked a Tonka truck or something like that, but instead we were both christened at our little Anglican church down the road. I kept going. We joined the choir. When I was 12, I was confirmed. One Sunday, I went along to the little youth group there, and they were signing up for this Outward Bound weekend away. It looked really fun, and I asked my mum if I could go. And off we trekked to a little hut somewhere in deepest, darkest Sussex. And um, that first night there was something that I'd never seen or experienced before. We went into this room and there were all these people with their hands in the air. And there was this guy in a green tank top and sandals and socks and everything. And there was a drum kit and it was nothing like the little church that I'd been going to. I think I would have run home, to be totally honest, if I could have made the journey from Sussex to Essex on my own, but I couldn't. I was stuck there. And I stayed. And over the weekend, they started talking about this bloke called Jesus. I didn't know Jesus. I knew a little bit about who God was. But that weekend, I met Jesus for the first time, and I heard that I could have a personal relationship with him. By the end of the weekend, I had prayed the prayer, gone home with a Bible and a little leaflet that I could read in my bedroom every night that would teach me more about what the Bible says and who Jesus is and how I could live my life as a Christian. I joined their church youth group um, through that weekend. There was a girl in my year at school who I didn't know was a Christian who was there with her youth group and they were running um, some of the sessions and and their youth group were in the band and um, they took me in and began to teach me about faith and and living a life of Jesus. Six months after that, my life as I knew it kind of imploded. My mum and dad were happily married my dad was a successful builder. He ran his own business and he was also a powerlifter. He was actually a world champion powerlifter. Um, everyone adored him, including me. We were really close and were really, really similar in loads of ways. But what we didn't know that was through his sport, my dad had become addicted to steroids and amphetamines and eventually cocaine. He worked as a nightclub bouncer on the side of running in his own building business and training three or four times a week. And as such, we didn't really see him a whole load so maybe that was why none of us realized that everything had gone as wrong as it had but one day on a sunday afternoon on fireworks night my mum asked me to go upstairs to her bedroom because my dad wanted to talk to me and i sat down on the bed next to him he sat next to me rang his hands between his knees and and said how do you tell your little girl something you know that's gonna it's gonna break her heart i asked him straight out like daddy you having an affair because it was the worst case scenario and i thought if i got that one out of the way that he, anything else he said would be fine he stared straight ahead and said yes yeah i am he promised that he wouldn't leave 
that they would sort it out. But two weeks later, I came home from school and as my mum was in the kitchen packing up our house to move, she told me that she didn't know where dad was. He hadn't come home that night and she'd phone work. He wasn't there. And that weekend we moved house without my dad. Um, the debt had got so bad that he'd convinced her that we needed to move. He told her that the business wasn't doing well enough when the truth was actually that it was his own drug problems that, that had caused that debt. We moved house from one side of the town where we lived to the complete opposite side of town to a much smaller house. But what he didn't know was that God was already putting a plan into place to pick up the pieces of the mess that he had created. This new house was literally through a little corridor, through a little alley, um, round the corner from the people that have become my new youth leaders that I've met at this weekend away in the summer. It was round the corner from my nan, it was round the corner from my mum's best friend. And it, that house and its position enabled us to be close to all the people that we needed to be close to in that really horrible time. Over the next five years, my dad came and went actually more times than any of us can now remember. It was a crazy few years being a teenager, trying to grow and learn in a faith, trying to deal with the anger and the hurt and the pain of my dad really walking away from us and causing all of that mess and chaos and not knowing yet how to live as a Christian, how to put into practice all the stuff that the Bible said about forgiveness and anger and how to let go of that. And I really struggled during that time to make sense of it. Later on in my life, um, a friend of mine, when I was telling her my story, said to me, didn't you think that was weird that you became a Christian and then everything in your life went so wrong? And it was such a strange point because up until that point, I actually never considered that question. And when she said this to me, I reflected for a while and I thought, do you know what? No, I don't think it's weird. I think that God knew all along the bad choices my dad was going to make. And he actually put into a plan something that would rescue us and would just allow us to always have the confidence that he was with us through those coming years i continued to attend that church with my mum driving me every sunday morning dropping me off um, amusing my brother for an hour and a half on the village green outside and flat refusing to step foot in the door um, no matter how much i asked her how much i begged her to come with me she was deeply suspicious of this new group of people that i'd become involved in and, and the time that she perceived they um took from me um i think she thought i'd joined a cult or something strange but eventually um one sunday morning she changed her mind. I don't know if maybe the weather was bad that day or she just got bored of trying to play with my brother outside by herself and she walked through the door. She lasted half a song and burst into tears and all the women in that church who had been so faithfully praying for me and my family um, and the short time that they'd known me gathered around her and showed her the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. My dad turned up every now and again just when we were getting used to life without him, he would come back and my mum would take him and dry him out. He would be back for a week, two weeks, a month, maybe three, and then he would leave again. Um, and for a very long time, towards the end, we lost contact with him for months at a time. Eventually, my mum said enough's enough, as any sane person might, and I thought that was it. Until one evening, um, she came home from a meeting at one of my church leaders' houses who was running a small group for new Christians. And during that evening, the other church leader had phoned and said, um, we've just had a call from your husband. He's, he's coming around to see us. At that point, we hadn't heard from my dad in a number of months. A couple of days after that, my dad called me and said, can we talk? And um, we went out for a drive, during which time he said to me that he had made a decision that he was gonna change his life, that he was clean. He had moved back in with his mum, with my nan. He had ended the relationship he had been in and that life was gonna change for him. 
his exact words were, I don't need one of those labels. I'm not going to become one of those Christians. And in that moment, my heart absolutely knew that he had become a Christian. I can't explain it to you, only to say that up until that point, I had been so angry with him. And whenever he came home, I was the one that said, I don't want to see him. I'm not, you know, talking to him. He can't tell me what to do. But in that moment, I knew that he changed. It was a bit of a journey from that point on for my mum and my dad um, as he slowly regained her trust and then eventually on their wedding anniversary about six months later they finally recommitted their, their vows in front of my whole church family and he moved back home for the last time. Since that time, he's um, travelled the world with his group of other guys that have all got fairly hairy stories like his. They're called Tough Talk if you want to ever go check them out and he's told hundreds of people his testimony and his story of God's grace and my story of God's grace is so intertwined with his that um, God knew me and had a plan for me and my family that was outside of time and space that he put things into place before I even knew I needed them to make sure that I would know how much he loved and cared for us um, in a time of real despair and hurt and heartache and upset and trouble in my teenage years so that's my story and I'm so privileged to be able to share it with you this morning if anything in there has touched you if you relate to it or um, it has made you think about God then I want you to know this morning that God loves you that he created you before the beginning of the world and that He sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. And if you don't know God and you would like a relationship with him, the only thing you have to do is turn towards him to say sorry for the bad things you've done and the times you've excluded him from your life and ask him into your heart and ask him um, to be the Lord and savior of your life. Go find someone you know um, who is a Christian. Go find a local church. Use the resources that are on the We Are Social Church website to hook in with someone who knows God and who can teach you more. Find a Bible and read it. Because God loves you and he wants a relationship with you. Thanks for listening. Praise God for these testimonies. Thank you so much. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. We release new testimonies every single week alongside Q&As, expository preaching and acoustic worship sessions. Thanks a lot for listening and see you soon. Bye.